reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, this is what I commanded my people. Listen to my voice, then I will be your God and you shall be my people. Walk in all the ways that I command you so that you may prosper. But they obeyed not, nor did they pay heed. They walked in the hardness of their evil hearts and turned their backs, not their faces, to me. From the day that your fathers left the land of Egypt, even to this day, I have sent you entirely all my servants, the prophets. Yet they have not obeyed me nor paid heed. They have stiffened their necks and done worse than their fathers. When you speak all these words to them, they will not listen to you either. When you call to them, they will not answer you. Say to them, this is the nation that does not listen to the voice of the God, of the Lord its God, or take correction. Faithfulness has disappeared. The word itself is banished from their speech. Verbum da mini. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us, for he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. Oh, that today you would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as in the day of Massa in the desert, where your fathers tempted me. They tested me, though they had seen my works. Dominos Voviscum, et cum spiritu tuo, Lexio Sancti Evangelii secundum Lucam, Gloria Tibi Domine. Jesus was driving out a demon that was mute, and when the, mute, when the demon had gone out, the mute man spoke, and the crowds were amazed. Some of them said, by the power of Beelzebel, the prince of demons, he drives out demons. Others, to test him, asked him for a sign from heaven. But he knew their thoughts and said to them, every kingdom divided against itself will be laid waste, and house will fall against house, 
And if Satan is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For if you say it is by Beelzebel that I drive out demons, if I then drive out demons by Beelzebel, by whom do your own people drive them out? Therefore, they will be your judges. But if it is by the finger of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man fully armed guards his palace, his possessions are safe. But when one stronger than he attacks and overcomes him, he takes away the armor on which he relied and distributes the spoils. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. Verbum Domini. The readings today are about the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. Heaven and hell. And the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan cannot exist together. In other words, they can't exist in mutual harmony with one another. In this second part of Lent, we're starting to enter into a period where the church meditates more intensely, you can say, on the reality of our baptism, especially those who are entering into initiation into the sacraments, those who are catechumens, those who are preparing for baptism, confirmation, their first Holy Communion, and it's a chance for the entire church to really meditate upon the reality of our own baptism. What happened on the day when we were baptized? The responsorial psalm says, if today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Hearing is essential to the proclamation of the gospel. If, no, if there are no hearers on the other side, then the proclamation of the gospel is in vain. So there's something that takes place in the proclamation of the gospel on both sides. There's the proclamation of the gospel and then there is the reception of that proclamation. There has to be hearers. There has to be not just hearers in, with our bodily senses, our ears, but there has to be open hearts, too. Because you can hear the proclamation of the gospel. You can hear Jesus speaking through the gospels. But is his message of salvation penetrating down into your lives? Is it making a difference in our hearts? Is it freeing us? In the kingdom of God, there is unity. There is communion. And in the kingdom of Satan, there is division. There is scattering. As it said in the gospel, scattering. There's no unity in the kingdom of Satan. Everybody's backs are turned against one another. There's a famous painting, I believe it might be an icon, of an image of hell, and everybody is turned against one another. There's no friendship in hell, other word, other, in, in other words. 
where when we think about what friendship is, this side of heaven, hopefully within families, within friendships, there's unity, there's peace. But we all have the experience in our lives what it means to have division in our lives, whether that be in our families, and that hurts the most, doesn't it, when there's division in our families. It doesn't look pretty, and it's not supposed to be pretty. But true unity is of God, communion with God. Father Angelus used to use the image of a wheel and the spokes of a wheel as you get closer to the center of the wheel, the spokes get closer to one another. On the outset, near the tire, the spokes are a little bit further away from one another. But the closer we get to God, to the center of the wheel, to the source, the closer we are not only to God, but the closer we are to one another. There's no division. There's even rubbing up against one another. In any, in any healthy family, that's a good thing, right? Sometimes we, we grow by our rubbing up against one another. And that's how we uh, rub one another's warts off. <laughs> but sometimes there, there's division in family life. And that hurts anyone in family. And we're to pray, especially in our lives where there is sources of division, for the Lord to heal that. Because only the Lord can heal any kind of division in our lives. We can't do that ourselves. We can attempt to do that. But only the Lord in his power and his mercy can heal those types of divisions. And we may not see it this side of heaven. Maybe some people pray for unity and communion with their loved ones, but they never really see it. And maybe it's the next generation, or maybe it's after they pass that their brother or sister comes around and ask forgiveness, first of all, from God. Again, use this imagery of drawing closer to our Lord, first of all. And when we draw close to the Lord, then we're drawing close to one another. We're not so divided. And we need to listen to his voice. Listening is connected to obedience. Obedience is connected to also hearing. The word, in a sense, means the same thing in Hebrew. To listen is to have obedience. Basically, you can put an equal sign. You should be able to put an equal sign when you hear the word obedience and to listen to listen to the voice of the Lord. From the book of the prophet Jeremiah, Jeremiah says, Thus says the Lord, This is what I commanded my people. Listen to my voice. Then I will be your God, and you shall be my people. Walk in my ways that I command you, so that you may prosper. And then he gives the result of what happened Afterwards, but they obeyed not, nor did they pay heed. They walked in the hardness of their evil hearts and turned their backs, not their faces, to me. From the day that their fathers left the land of Egypt till his very day. And, and further in this reading, it gives four different examples of body parts 
to describe the response of the people who had turned away from the Lord. First of all, Jeremiah talks about backs being turned, faces, necks being stiff-necked, and ultimately their hearts. In connecting this with baptism, those who are going through RCIA right now and entering into this phase of preparing for baptism, there's different things that can be done within the context of the parish life, especially on Sundays. There are actually anointings that can be received by those who are preparing for baptism with the oil of catechumens. And most of us, probably most of us, were baptized when we were young children. And you remember there is, even before the baptism, there is a prayer of exorcism. And that's what these anointings are with the oil of catechumens. There are, there are real exorcisms. It's a prayer where the church is interceding and the priest is literally anointing the candidate, the catechumen, rather, and praying for deliverance, you know, praying for healing. And, and, and this is really essential in, as somebody goes up before the, before the reception of baptism, the exorcisms that they receive through the oil of catechumens prepares them for the reception of the sacrament of baptism. When we were children, this is the prayer that was prayed with the oil of catechumens when we were baptized, before we were baptized. It says, Almighty and ever-living God, you sent your only Son into the world to cast out the power of Satan, spirit of evil, to rescue man from the kingdom of darkness and bring him into the splendor of your kingdom of light. We pray for this child. Set him, her, free from original sin. Make him, her, a temple of your glory and send your Holy Spirit to dwell with him or her. That's the prayer that each one of us had prayed over us. Maybe some of you here were baptized in the extraordinary form, so the prayer would have been a little different, obviously in Latin. But it's a prayer of exorcism, a real prayer of exorcism. So, when we think about the gospel today, St. John Chrysostom says that the possessed man in today's gospel was unable to present his request himself because he was dumb. In other words, he couldn't speak. He was unable to ask others to do it either because the devil had tied up his tongue. And together with his tongue, he had bound up his soul. In this journey of Lent, we're on a journey of conversion together as a whole church. And we are in need today of examples of conversion. Whenever Father Joseph starts talking about a story, everybody peeks up and listens. And there are examples of conversions today, especially I would like all of you to, if you can, to see the movie Unplanned, which I will see tonight with Brother John Therese and a group of people from Birmingham. And I've already, I've already seen it two times already. Um, and interviewed Abby Johnson. And her story is one of 
really obedience and listening to the voice of the Lord and battling within her own conscience, she was a very good person. If you read her book and you see this story, you see a person, a woman who desperately and had an open heart to help other women. Even you saw this when she was working for Planned Parenthood. You saw that she desperately wanted to help women. But as she recounts, there was blinders up. She was deceived in her thinking. And it began in her heart. Her heart wasn't truly converted. And I'd like to encourage you because it's very powerful when you see her story, when you see the power of God's grace transform the life of another person. And I have to say it's done so well and it's very faithful to her actual story that she wrote and you really see how the power of God's kingdom comes into con comes directly against the kingdom of Satan and hell. And how, as I said earlier, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan, they can't coexist together. One has to go. And hopefully it's the kingdom of darkness. Hopefully we don't choose the kingdom of darkness. Hopefully we choose holiness, the kingdom of light, the kingdom of unity, the kingdom of communion. And I hope that when you watch this movie, pray. And, and this movie, and many people have said to Abby and people about this movie, oh, it's just Christians that are going to go see this movie. Fine. That's fine. We, we need a reconversion. We all need a wake-up call. I will guarantee you, if you see this movie, you will be shaken to your core. You will be shaken to your core about the reality of evil. The reality that so many children are being slaughtered every single day. It's worse than the Holocaust. It's the worst atrocity that's happening in our world today. And we have got to wake up. We have got to wake up. Again, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of hell cannot coexist together. We have got to wake up and to accept our baptism. The reality that God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit dwell within us. And we need to, as I was saying earlier, we need to get closer to that center, we need to come closer to the Lord, and in coming closer to the Lord, we come closer to one another, and we're not so divided. Everything is so divided. My mom was saying to me the other day, this whole world needs a conversion. Our whole country needs a conversion. We can't be so divided against one another. We all know what division feels like. We all need a conversion of heart and to draw closer to our Lord so that we may be closer, God willing, to one another.